Warning! The following video may contain spoilers for some of your favourite shows. Just remember that before you continue. Stevie, out! Hello one and all, this is my reactions to Dragon Ball Super Episode 77. Finally! The Universal Survival Arc is here. The Universe Survival Saga, whatever you want to call it. The Tournament of Power has been announced. It has begun. It feels like a new day. It feels like a new day. Yes, it is. It feels like a new day in Dragon Ball. It almost felt like a new franchise. Let me get right into this. So before I start, let's get talking to everyone. There's a comment section down below. Go and tell me what you thought of the episode and what you think is going to happen. There are no right or wrong answers, so don't be shy and tell me what you thought of the episode. And hey, if you want to, you can do me a solid one and share this video out to all your friends. Or if you don't like the video, share it to your enemies. But anyway, let's begin. Right off the back, the new music and intro video is awesome. I cannot praise this enough. It fucking rocks. I am sorry to swear, but it really does. Every aspect of this new intro was awesome and it legitimately had the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. I just could not wait for this to start. I, I am so hyped for this new arc and episode. It is great. At the start of the episode, we see Zeno and the scene is set. He is almost like Boo, as in he is really innocent, but will happily destroy stuff as he does not realise what he's doing. It's like Zeno doesn't really understand right or wrong. It's, it's quite weird. Well, it's not weird, actually. It's quite straightforward. And this is something we have explained later on in the episode by a seriously pissed off Beerus. A good illustration of Zeno's innocence was the game the two Zenos were playing. Do we call them Zeno or Zenos or... I, I don't know. Anyway, as the outcome of this game to them was just balls breaking into nothing. But in reality, the two of them were just laughing, casually sitting, destroying planets. This is not a lie. They were sitting destroying planets. This was their game and so far they had destroyed 202 planets. 101 each was it? They're verging on gods of destruction now. That was insane. That bit blew my mind. Another thing from the start of the episode. Goku can drive now. Goku, congratulations on getting your driving license as we know it was tough for you. After we see Goku driving about in his new van he sees a car broken down and he goes to fix it, but it turns out some idiots are trying to rob slash mug Goku. This was an awesome scene with Goku obviously owning everyone with no problems. And also with another great callback to Dragon Ball Z Episode 1, he took a guy out in exactly the same way Raditz took a guy out. He said the guy shot him, he caught the one bullet, he just flicked it back at him, knocked out. It was really, really cool. Dragon Ball Super has been amazing with its callbacks to both Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, which is nice as it really helps to tie everything together and hold the franchise as a franchise as opposed to things being broken off. And So this is something I really liked. Like That was just such a cool scene that he did exactly the same as what his brother had done. In this scene though, we are shown that Goku has got rusty as he, def he manages to, de to deflect a bullet but at the same time it leaves him with a nasty scar. He's got a bit of a boo-boo. Also in this episode, it seems like we've had another small time skip as Bulma's pregnant now obviously and she is ready to birth her child. So it would seem like we've had another maybe 8 or 9 month time skip between the last episode that's cool with me, I don't mind time skips. It's something I really like in Dragon Ball. They don't stick in one time like The Simpsons or Family Guy or any of the other stuff like I'm just going for standard anime type cartoons that everyone knows where time never progresses. I love that in like Dragon Ball and a lot of Japanese anime, time progresses and that is really cool. By the way, was it on my imagination or did Goku at least kill one guy in that fight? <laughs> The last guy with the bullet he deflected, he deflected that bullet into the guy and the guy went down. I think he's dead. Goku, no remorse. <laughs> he's kind of like Xeno in that aspect. On to the drawing and animation of the episode. Top marks. Really top marks. It was really, really, really nice to look at the whole time. I, could, I, I watched it over a few times 
to see if there was any dodgy frames of animation, if like any dodgy drawings, because sometimes Dragon Ball Super can, obviously, it's a weekly anime, it can slip, there can be the odd bad bit, but no, there was nothing. Every single bit was done great. I mean, we had no crazy fight scenes, so the animators had a nice relaxed week here. On the art style side of things, one thing I noticed, I don't know if this is just me nitpicking, but the overall drawn of the characters in the show seem to be moving more to a manga style than a modern anime look. A lot of the art style for the episode had heavy, like, cell... Not cell, well, heavy outlines on the cell shading, which is kind of what we've seen in the outro videos in the past, where it's drawn in a comic manga slash manga style. But it seems like a lot of the drawings in this are going back to this sort of really thick black outlines around everything and it's something I am really happy with because it gives the show a look of its own. Please let this art style be the standard going forward as just like the callbacks to previous Dragon Ball franchises the art style has a more classic look and I feel it just really works for Dragon Ball and it makes it stand out from other animes. Much like I expected it looks like we're gonna have to wait a small while until we actually get to the fighting and the universe survival tournament, or should I say, the tournament of power. I think that in the next few weeks, maybe four or five weeks, we're going to see the characters' stories being built up again in the background with Goku picking the teams and people training for this until we actually get to the fighting. Of course, we've seen in the trailer for next week, the meeting with all the universes, Kaioshin and Gods of Destruction is happening. So next week looks like we're getting a bit of political drama with the Kais and the Gods of Destruction. So this could be interesting. I wonder if it's going to have like a Star Wars vibe. You know, when they're all sitting around the government parliament building and the floaty pod things. So that should be pretty cool. But yeah, as I said, I think we're going to have a lot of character story building in the next four or five weeks, which I am, again, totally happy with until we get to the fighting. So I've been babbling here. The main story of the episode, just before I forget to even mention it, was Goku wanting to go back and train with Wists due to him getting rusty. As per usual, bribing him with nice food. It is during this training, Goku all of a sudden remembers Xeno wanted to have a tournament because Goku's like, man, I need to fight some strong people. And then, oh, wait, Xeno wanted to have a tournament with everyone in every universe. When he says this, Beerus is just like, no, look, stop it. Don't even think about speaking to Xeno. Xeno is bad news. Beerus goes on to tell him, he's like, look, his innocence is what's dangerous about him. He doesn't know right or wrong. It's essentially Xeno doesn't know right or wrong. He's just there. As I said, very reminiscent of like, uh, magic, like Kid Boo and stuff like that where he's got no concept of right or wrong so he doesn't really know how to do right or wrong and as we've seen that before when Zeno got at the end of the Zamasu Goku Black arc when Zeno appeared and he didn't just take out Zamasu he could, he destroyed everything so we've, been, we've seen this before Zeno is bloody dangerous Beerus nearly took Goku out here this bit was awesome He's telling Goku, no, look, stop it, stop it, stop it. And Goku is just not listening to him. And Beerus just stands up and he's like, look, maybe I've been a bit lenient with you. The hand goes up and we all know what that means with Beerus. He's a way to do the destroy move. At this bit, I was like, whoa, Beerus has all of a sudden got very, very scary. Because at this point, Goku's, he could have wiped Goku off the face of existence there. Yeah, I said that, face of existence. Beerus tells Goku straight that, look, you're a, you're a threat to every living being in existence and you don't even know it. And the fact is, this is true. Goku was right all the way back in Dragon Ball Z after Cell died and they try to wish him back. He is actually better off dead for the benefit of society because Goku causes so much shit and he doesn't even realise it. Another bit of awesome from this episode was Vegeta. Vegeta smiled! Can you believe that? We've seen Vegeta smiling. He was on his own. He thought no one was about. He was thinking about the baby that's on the way. And man, he was happy. Vegeta is actually happy with, with something, anything. He smiled. 
because we see a complete polar shift in Vegeta almost in this episode. I mean, well, when, Go when Goku appears, he's still acting princely and grumpy, but it's clear that he's happy with life, and he didn't even seem that annoyed at Goku being there. He's just having a chat with Goku, then we get the funny back and forth with Goku trying to persuade him to come out and play. He's like, wait a minute, Bulma's pregnant? It's not you that's pregnant, you're not giving birth, why can't you come? Which, a joke that Whist then again said to him, he's like, Ah, oh, Vegeta, you're pregnant. When is it due? He's like, I'm not pregnant. Bully Bulma is pregnant. He's like, oh, then why can't you come train? It's not like you're giving birth. Classic. I loved it. But yeah, in this whole scene, we've seen that Vegeta's really changed. He's really looking forward to the birth of his new child. He's like embracing it, not like when Tr when Trunks was born, when Trunks was, when Bulma was pregnant with Trunks and all that, Vegeta didn't give a shit, he really didn't give a shit, he didn't even give a shit about Bulma, but I, I guess after things like Battle of Gods and also the Zamasu story thing, we do see that Vegeta really does care for his family, and now the polar shift has happened, Vegeta is a changed man. The conversation, as I said, with Goku trying to persuade Vegeta to train was quite funny, and then Whis came about and then started trying to persuade him again. But alas, Vegeta has responsibilities. <laughs> he tried to tell Goku, he's like, look, my baby's away to be born, I can't go. Goku's like, <laughs> I was dead when Goten was born, what are you talking about? Bloody hell, Goku, you're just like, as Vegeta said, he's just like, he, I can't remember what it is, but it's on screen now because I'm taking screenshots from the sub version. Vegeta had the words that I am lost for. As mentioned earlier on in the video, one of the best bits of the episode for me was Beerus preparing to destroy Goku for wanting to go and visit Zeno and bringing up Zeno in the first place. Beerus just no, well he didn't, he knows, it's his boss, he knows that Zeno is bad news on massive levels that Goku just does not understand and Goku is still a legit threat to the universes, as he just does not realise that his love for fighting causes trouble time after time after time, and the scene with Beerus just putting his hand up and telling Goku that, look, you've gone too far, buddy, I'm going to take you down a peg, it was just awesome, uh, again, I was legit like, whoa, holding on to my seat, what the fuck is happening here, Beerus has just went crazy, and he went from his cool, pudding loving lovable baldy cat self into his full-on god of destruction mode and that was scary very scary Beerus is awesome anyway in closing to this very <laughs> we I was gonna say we because it's written on the screen but no it's actually a very long reaction video this episode gets a solid grade Four stars. Not that I ever use stars or give episodes grades, but I feel this one deserves it. No real action happened, but my god, there was a lot of great story building, and we have set the scene for the universe survival saga. The tournament of power is coming, and to me, it felt like the start of a brand new Dragon Balls franchise. I just loved it. Remember, everyone, subscribe and all that stuff. Send the video out. Thank you very much for listening to all this. I love making these videos, and I'm never going to stop making these videos. Majin, Stevie, uh, 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 chicka, 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 out. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> Cheerio.